Hello, this is Mark Witten. I'm the voice of Alex in Street Fighter V, and you are listening to Hawaii's number one podcast, the Casanova Podcast. You can't escape! Welcome everyone to another episode of Hawaii's number one podcast, number one podcast in the state of Hawaii, the Casanova Podcast. I'm your host, Mikhail Casanova. Y'all catch how many times I said Casanova in that intro? Let's just make sure you remember it. Anyway, welcome back to another episode, everyone. And what we're going to do today is we're going to invite the one, the only, Mark Wooden. Now, you're going to be very familiar with him if you're a fan of Street Fighter V, as he is the voice of of Alex, who is the main character of the Street Fighter 3 series, as well as being introduced with his origin in Street Fighter 5, and I'm so happy that Mark Whitten was able to bring the character to life and flesh him out in a way that hasn't been done with any portrayal of Alex, so super phenomenal. And you're also, you'll be familiar with him as he's also a voice actor for several characters within Octopath Traveler, He's also within Fallout 76, the upcoming IP from Sega, Judge Eyes, aka Judgment. He's one of the main cast members of that. He's also part of Fire Emblem Heroes, Dark Rose Valkyrie, Star Fox Zero, as well as Battlefield 1 and Hunter x Hunter. So with that being said, if you guys are ready to do it, I'm ready to do it. Let's go ahead and invite this amazing guest onto the show. All right, and welcome everyone to another episode of Hawaii's number one podcast, Casanova Podcast. I'm your host, Mikhail Casanova, and I have with me the one, the only, and it is truly an honor to have you on, Mark Whitten. Man, introduce yourself. <laughs> Woo! Woo! It's Mark Whitten. Uh, hi, I'm Mark Whitten. Uh, I am very excited to be here. Um, I I am a voice actor indeed, uh, living in Los Angeles, living the life, and uh, yeah, just very excited to be on board today, um, and I'm sure this introduction will just get expanded throughout the podcast, so we'll start there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, go ahead and plug like your social media links, your website, or anything you're up, you're able to speak about that you're working on in the future. Oh. Yeah, sure. So uh, I'm on Twitter at MP Witten, W H I T T E N. Uh, on Instagram at M Witten, uh, W H I T T E N, the same. And um, things to plug, let's see. So, I mean, unfortunately, in VO, obviously, we can't really talk about a ton of things that are going to be coming out. So there, yeah. there are a lot of cool things that I will have coming out in. 2019. Um, a couple of couple of animes that I've had the uh the honor of playing major characters in uh that i can't quite talk about now a couple of cool games and and guest stars on animations that are coming up um one thing that did drop that i was able to talk about was judgment uh in the yakuza franchise which mm -hmm. super excited for that game if anyone has uh seen any of the press about it heard about the cast that's in it it's a really wonderful cast it's it's an awesome game uh, i think people are really going to enjoy it and you know hopefully people are going to also um maybe it'll get some new players to the yakuza franchise uh, i know that everyone really loves the fact that it is all japanese and there's some folks that'll probably still want to play it in the original japanese 
but uh, I think this is about uh, the best you can get for a really solid dub. And I hope that it does uh, really cool things for the franchise uh, going forward. So I'm very excited to announce them a part of that. Um, can't really talk about uh, my character at the moment. There are some people who can talk about their characters, some people who can't, but it is a really wonderful, intricate mystery uh, action adventure game. Um, so there are details that clearly would be spoilers. So got to keep that all under wraps, but uh, it's a fun experience and can't wait for that one to come out. Um, other things that I'm up to, uh, one thing that I would love to plug if it's all right with you. All right, I'm go, gonna go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I, make, I make an audio drama podcast uh, called The Theater of Tomorrow. And it is basically like the Twilight Zone in a podcast. I do uh, a lot of the audio production um, and I do a lot of the voice acting on it. Uh, my friend out here is a writer. He writes all the uh, original sci-fi stories for it. And we've been releasing a number of episodes. I think we got about 30 episodes, six season arcs. Um, they're, uh, they're fairly compact stories. So if you don't like one of them, you can move on to the next. If it's not your jam for film noir on the moon, you might enjoy Mad Max, weird post-apocalyptic uh, He-Man in the desert. Um, so we've got everything there and it's a really cool, uh, project where we can create a bunch of things with uh, my friend, myself and other friends in the voice acting community that I can get to come on and join. Uh, some folks might be familiar with Sam Regal, uh, who is on cool. critical role. And so, yeah, he's uh, a good friend of mine. We worked together on a, on a DreamWorks show, uh, for a long time. And uh, we've been lucky enough to have him on the podcast um, a number of times. Greg Baldwin, who is Uncle Iroh and uh, Haku. Uh, so he has come on to the podcast as well. So we've got some cool guest stars and, of course, our core cast, which are killing it every time. And we'll be coming out with some uh, some new seasons pretty soon in this year, too. So you can check us out. We are theater of tomorrow and you can find that on itunes you can find it on libsyn and uh, theater of tomorrow.com so check us out download it and uh yeah show us some love and that's okay. all i got to plug right now <laughs> okay okay so, so uh we can scrap all the other questions we can just talk about this podcast so, oh my god okay <laughs> like go in like i like you're the second guest i've had on that well third guest actually i've had on that has a podcast because i i've had on uh michael t coleman a good friend of mine he's mm -hmm. got the uh tales of the extraordinary and then uh kyle Iver, he's got the uh the uh, big ball podcast but this is awesome <laughs> man like I, I love when I have a guest on that's also a podcaster. Like, I kind of, I'm like, dude, screw all the other questions. Let's just dive into that. <laughs> well, you know what it takes to create a podcast, obviously. You've been doing this for a bit. So uh, there's, you know, it, it takes a lot of work. Um, one of the reasons that we jumped into this particular podcast is uh, I am, when I came out to LA, I was interested in not only pursuing film, voiceover, all the different aspects of acting, but I was also interested in creating a lot of my own work. Um, because as anyone who has been out in the acting community knows, sometimes it can be a slog and sometimes you're waiting for the phone to ring or you're just hoping you're in between jobs and it's a dry period, but you never want to stay uh, idle. So I always want to be making something and creating something. I always want to be acting or learning a new skill, which I learned a lot about audio production when I was doing this. Mm -hmm. Um, I luckily have this lovely sound booth and I was like, well, I got to do something with it. And I have, I, you know, I, I envy you. Man, One of these days. <laughs> no, this thing's this thing's pretty awesome. I I, I love it and I, I live in it. So I'm actually glad. Before this, I was just in a closet with like coats hanging all around me and you know, really doing it the low budget way. Which for anyone interested in uh voice acting, voiceover out there, that is totally a legitimate way to get into it and to start. You just got to find yourself a dead space because I know some of your um, listeners might be interested in that aspect of things, too. Um, mm -hmm. But luckily, I got to a point um, once once I booked a show with Netflix and DreamWorks, I was like, well, shoot, I'll upgrade to a booth. <laughs> and I did. And it's been fantastic. But, you know, having these materials, I thought, well, 
I can really do something with it. And um, I had come out here and tried producing, uh, not tried, I had actually been producing. I, I produced um, a web series called Rolling High. Uh, I'm a big Dungeons and Dragons fan. And Rolling High is a, a web series that I wrote and then produced um, about a bunch of friends who played D and D, and it also kind of parallels what's happening in the real world in their their kind of office jobs. They're they're unaware of the parallels, but it slaps back and forth between the two settings um, with people completing each other's sentences almost and thoughts, um, and kind of shows how those worlds, how we bring what we have in the office into the game world, and how the game world kind of bleeds into our understanding of living through real life and maybe imagining it as a fantasy. So after producing that, which was a bear, I was like, holy crap, I cannot produce another film right now. But because there's so many people involved, right? You've got to have a DP, you got to have crew, you got to have uh, actors and everyone has to meet at the same date. And then my friend Travis, who's a writer, uh, Travis McMaster, he has all these scripts. And I was like, let's just do these like old style radio plays. Like I've got all the the means to do it. Um, another good friend of mine hooked me up with a, like 300 gigabytes of sound effects. And I was like, I have all these materials. We can just make this on our own and it can be the two of us. I don't have to have a giant crew and I can get the actors because I know a ton of actors out here. I can just bring the actors in, record them, and then we can take our time producing this on our own. And it gave us a lot of creative liberty, too, to do things, stories that we would never be able to tell on screen without a huge budget or big stretches of the imagination, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I can be in a wasteland, and I don't have to pack up a crew and move them out to the desert somewhere for a shoot. I can be inside a starship, and I don't have to build these sets, but I can... I can build these environments sonically uh, for people and I can still get awesome performances because I know a ton of actors out there who we're all, we all want to act and they're all ready to do it. Um, and now I can give an outlet for all of us to kind of practice and, and uh, I mean, not even practice, perform and do what we all do best and then put it together into a package that is readily available. My ultimate dream is to have some fan come along and say, hey, let's animate all these and be like, all right, I'll find the money <laughs> and, and make them, you know, animations. Because <laughs> um, I think that would be super cool because clearly I'm a big uh, fan of animation, video games, all that sort of thing. Um, but for the moment, you know, creating the podcast and creating these stories uh, in the audio version has been really wonderful. Um, yeah, so you should definitely check it out. Every everyone being a new storyline too is like a new problem to solve. We never stick with a genre, which Travis and I talk about this a lot. But we were like, in the course of starting this one podcast, which is basically anthology science fiction, um, we looked back at it and we're like, we've got five seasons, maybe like half a dozen shorts. We've nearly started six podcasts here. Because each one of them has like a different soundscape. They're in a different yeah. setting. They have uh, a different collection of characters. And looking back, we're like, we could take our Kennedy Roundhouse Moon Detective and make that its own entire podcast. Um, you know, Dust Runner could become its own podcast. And uh, <laughs> I mean, we we obviously wrote and told the story that we had. But looking back on it, we're like, man, we could really expand these worlds too and, and dive into them. And some of them we have revisited and we've made stories that are within the same world, but mm. um, but like taking place in a different area of it. So it's been a it's been quite a fun journey to problem solve each new world that we come across and to create something new each time. So like when you guys are uh, when mm. it comes to like when you're doing the storylines, like, are you guys going off a script or is this just completely organic, like how you're going through it? So um, Travis uh, writes all of these stories out. So mm -hmm. he's he's had these storylines um, in mind. Uh, being a writer, that's kind of his bread and butter. So he's able to come up with this. He's very, he loves pop culture. He loves old pop culture. Uh, so he kind of died and loves sci-fi, um, fantasy, 
so he's got a lot a, a wealth of of previous knowledge uh, and connections that he's drawing on. Um, and he comes up with, you know, a pretty solid script and there's always flexibility within the script um, okay. for us to create something different. So it's not like we're just sitting around bullshitting um, and coming up with something. Maybe in like the initial idea phase, mm -hmm. we'll bullshit a little bit back and forth until we land on a concept that we're like, this would be cool. Um, one example we have, uh, we had this one that was like a, uh, it was a robot that hunts down cryptids and, and it was kind of dark and, and it was kind of this weird, um, mildly more horrific thing that he was going for initially, but something about the script wasn't really landing like we wanted it to um and as we were talking back and forth because he had this idea he was like yeah it's this robot he walks around to other planets and finds these cryptids and really horrible things happen and i was like what if it's we were kind of bullshitting back and forth and we got to the point where he's like what if it's a comedy what if he's kind of like this this robot that that almost the the pleasure of it is his total disregard for organic life because it doesn't matter to him because he's immortal and he's like a shock jock who who travels through the uh through the galaxies kind of plugging his own show all the time and he jams down to another planet and he's like hey we're gonna find out what's here and he just kind of like all the bio life forms are astounded because <laughs> a robot just landed on their planet um who has the technology the uh understanding to possibly solve tons of their problems that are happening in their world but he doesn't give a shit because he's, you know, not going to die anytime <laughs> ever. And he's just interested in finding this weird little zany, um, you know, uh, niche thing. And then, mm. and then cheesing it to the next planet. So, uh, that worked out way better. <laughs> we came up with something <laughs> that was just super cool. Um, so in that regard, we'll, there is some flexibility within the story, but mostly we'll get the script. Um, I'll cast folks from around, around town and they either record in their own booths if they have setups or they'll come over to us and we record them here. And then from then on, I have all the performances and then I kind of cut them all together how I wish. And at certain points, we, we may omit things, then we may do pickups. Um, this is more a labor of love. So uh, in getting this out, we, we generally are mindful of folks' time. Um, mm. Because you never want to be like, mm, could you say this line? Like, does it really matter that they say it this way instead of that? So we keep our pickups <laughs> to a bare minimum. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's how it works. We have a pretty set script. Um, Another quick story is that uh, there are some times when we'll have the script and we realize that it's not working. We had another short where it was just a monologue and it was a monologue of someone who was in heaven, possibly. Um, and his voice is just kind of ethereally echoing and he's talking about this weird place that they claim is heaven. But they're mm. but it's it's a little more disturbing and and. Um, and uh, I don't know, what's the right word for it? it? It doesn't seem like what you would think heaven to be. It's not harps and, and jolliness and, and bliss. It was more of like... Surreal, well, not surreal. Um, yeah, surreal is, is uh, touching on it. Um, either way, he's talking about this experience that he's having. And, and we realized after we had recorded that we're like, this does not make any sense. There, mm -hmm. I feel like we have no frame of reference. And Travis suggested he was like, "You, you should, uh, you should make this like uh, a game show host or like a late night talk show host." And they're talking to this person, and they're like, "Oh, we have a caller from heaven, quote unquote." And, and I guess we're going <laughs> to talk to him now. And it's kind of like almost you're not sure whether it's a bit or whether it's actually some some caller, and. And that was a way in which, so he just told me to take the script and mm -hmm. improv a bunch of sections in between the monologue that would justify the responses. 
And I was like, this is not going to work out at all. <laughs> <laughs> but surprisingly, surprisingly, it actually did. And there were certain moments, there was one moment where I, I 100% had to fudge a couple things because I needed like the line to cut out because mm -hmm. there was no justifiable way to to do things but but we took a we took great care when approaching that too because we didn't want it to just be it cuts out because we didn't write it well enough mm -hmm. we justified it to the point where this line kind of gets out of control this person is talking about these things that are happening and it slowly dawns on the audience that something very uh real and terrifying and absurd is happening and there are noises that this this otherwise unsuspecting audience is unacquainted with you imagine folks in like uh you know in, at the very beginnings of when radio was first introduced and there's this like talk show that's happening mm -hmm. and you know how war of the worlds kind of freaks everybody out yeah kind yeah, of yeah, going yeah. for that same effect where they're having this interview and stuff starts happening that they can't explain and so the audience is getting just a little more tense and mm -hmm. and we had it reach a bit of a fever pitch while this person is just still talking and and then the host kind of bleeds into this moment where he realizes that this guy's not going to stop talking the audience is really freaking out there's weird stuff happening to the to um to the framework of the studio that they're recording in and finally they just have to like kind of cut the cast at the end of it so mm -hmm. everyone's getting a little more uncomfortable and it really added this nice dimension to the story that wasn't there before and that's i guess the kind of problem solving that uh that i'm i'm talking about that we had like an excellent time with because it turned that one monologue into mm. something so much more multi-dimensional than it ever was at the beginning Ooh. and so in that way we came up with this cool story that if you just looked at the beginning monologue you're like oh that's interesting and what we turned it into was this neat experience that's uh that's way more disconcerting and has a frame of reference that we as the audience can connect with um awesome. so yeah there's cool stuff like that and and we get to do that every season <laughs> so yeah okay. it's a lot of so fun you've definitely given me a new podcast that i can enjoy because <laughs> like when i'm working or even when i'm at home sometimes do i just i need a podcast going like i i I'm the type that I can hear it and like the way you're describing it, like I can already tell that if I were to listen to it, I could visualize it because that's yeah. just, man, that sounds okay. Yeah, I, that's the new podcast. People, yeah. if you're watching, if you're listening, this is what you need to go over theateroftomorrow.com. Look it up on, on iTunes. And uh, what's the other outlet? Are you on Spotify as well? Uh, Libsyn. We should be on Spotify too. Libsyn was the other one. I don't know how how many people use what different podcatchers. There's so many of them out there these days. Um, but Libsyn is another hosting platform. Um, we, we thought SoundCloud was going to go out of business for a while. I guess they didn't. I don't know. I thought um, that too. That's why I I actually started. Uh, like I started this podcast like a year a year ago. And I started putting some episodes on SoundCloud, and then I thought it was going out of business, so I stopped. And then now I've got people saying, well, when are you going to put episodes on SoundCloud? I'm like, that's, that's still the thing? Okay. <laughs> they, they are still there. <laughs> Found a lot of great music on SoundCloud. I, I mean, I'm glad they're still there. So, yeah. um, But, you know. We'll so see. you're on uh, iTunes, Libsyn, uh, Spotify. Spotify. I... Gosh, uh, what all the different things are we on? You can probably <laughs> find us on what's the, what's the Android one? Uh, the, the they have Google? two. They have two now. Um, they they have the Google Play Music, which you can get a lot of podcasts on. Uh, but they just opened a new one called um, Google Google Podcasts, which I guess is supposed to be the competitor or the equivalent to Apple Podcasts. Uh, <laughs> Right. But it's kind of hard. It's really hard to get on that one because the only way to upload your podcast onto Google Podcasts is that you have to have your RSS feed uh, be on a website that's easily searchable by Google. Right, right. So the, another thing with that is it doesn't automatically update as quickly as like iTunes and the others. So I've had people like, 
when's the next episode of your podcast going to be on Google Podcasts? I'm like, like I've had ten of them, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I'm like, wait, wait, what do you mean? What episode are you on? Oh, we're on episode thirty five. I'm like, I'm on Whoa. episode sixty seven. What are you talking? Whoa! <laughs> Good news, you have a lot of catching up you can do. <laughs> right, <laughs> plenty of stuff for those long drives. Oh man, it, it's it's something like the, the whole podcasting journey. I think it's uh, truly amazing. Like I never would have, mm-hmm. uh, I never would have thought it would be as fun as it is because you can be so creative, uh, and it's 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 so fun. Like the editing part of it, the the scripting. Like, you yeah. know, we, even with this podcast here, like, I, we have a whole stack of questions, but we're like, no, let's just go organic. Let's talk about matter. some podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> no, it is cool. There's so much flexibility and and a lot of a lot of access to it. Um, I mean, one thing that it's also affected the VO industry is that everyone has access to this equipment at, at uh, fair prices now. Mm-hmm. Everyone can get a pretty quality mic. Um, and you can find yourself in a, in a quality, uh, dead space and, and a lot more people are having access to this form of creation. It's kind of like the wild west, especially with podcasts out there. And you can try a bunch of things that are on the fringe that you wouldn't find from, uh, large producers, uh, all the time on networks or on TV, because, you know, there's a lot more money behind those things. So they're like, let's make safe decisions. And luckily there's, there's actually a lot of unsafe decisions that get made within that industry even. And that's fantastic because, you know, we, we know the formulas now and it's, it's so wonderful that we can get outside of those things and have uh, creativity pouring into us from, from all different directions. Um, And speaking specifically to different uh, niches of people Mm -hmm. too. You don't have to talk to the entire audience because it's perfectly viable to reach a very specific audience and talk specifically to them. Um, you know, it's, I mean, it's nice that we all have the water cooler talk that we can all get to the, the big <laughs> shows that we all watch, uh, you know, um, but it's, it's also nice that you can find entertainment that is very specific and, yeah. and, uh, and can, and can really speak to the diversity of life experiences that we have out there. So that's another cool thing that the podcasts have uh, enabled people to do too. You can get a lot of voices in the conversation. So very, that's very, neat. Yeah. <laughs> very true. That's a, now I'll get off of my pedestal. <laughs> Jesus. You can edit that out, please. <laughs> I was gonna say, um, um, I forget what it is. It, uh, I think it's called Unlocked. Uh, are you doing that as well? Unlocked. Uh, yeah, I, um, I'm, I'm actually, I'm not on Unlocked uh, as of yet, though I have heard about it. And there's so, so many cool people within, especially the anime industry, who are in it. Um, I've worked with David Vincent uh, a couple of times um, as well, and. And he he obviously has made that app come to life, and it has told me about it. I I should probably get onto it. I must admit, I'm I'm a little mortally terrified of of uh, <laughs> social media. I feel like I don't know how to do it right, and I feel like I'm going to screw either. up. So I, <laughs> so I don't know if you if you do see me on unlocked in the future, and I'm a total doof while I'm while I'm doing videos. I apologize for any of the content that comes out, but. <laughs> I mean, maybe I'll try it, but I, I can't guarantee quality. I, I can only guarantee that you might see some some uh, some dude bumbling around for a few minutes of your time. Um, <laughs> but I'm happy to share it with you. <laughs> yeah, I, I found out about um, it. Uh, I think I found out about it from uh, is it Mona Marshall. Is either Mona Marshall or Cal Iver. I think no. Uh-huh. I think it's Kyle. Yeah, Kyle Kyle-Iver? was talking yeah. about it. And then um, I was like, "What? What is that?" And then he's like, "Oh, this is a way for us to interact with the fans and ask questions." Yeah. And I'm like, "Damn, that just killed my whole angle with my podcast." <laughs> <laughs> so right, I know. Right, it's, it's um. I mean, here we get to have like a long form conversation too. Uh, you know, so so I mean, I'm not. I haven't really been on Unlocked myself. Uh, I know a lot of folks who are on it. 
Um, and it is kind of a cool direct connection, but you know, here we kind of get to sit down and talk for a while, uh, in that nice interview setting. And I think there's room for, honestly, there's room for both of those things. Some people want to be right there doing the Q and a, some people just want to like kick back and, and hear the chat for a little while. And I think that there's validity in both of those forms. Um, uh, one of these days, I, I will I will let y'all know if I if I do join Unlocked and join some of my very good friends who are on there. Uh, they right. they just they have so many good credits and they're so they're so so prolific. Some <laughs> of those people I mentioned Bryce before when we were chatting too, and I know he's on there and and uh, and he's very active in it. Um, and it's funny because when we're going in to do recording sessions for anime or for video games, a lot of times we're crossing paths. So I'm seeing all these these guys and girls uh, as they're going into their sessions, and and we get to like ships in the night, pass over, and and chat with them. So they're all they're all really fantastic people, and definitely hop onto that platform and and connect with them right there, awesome. and then come back and listen to us, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah yeah so so there's that social media um <laughs> social media is such a landmine it's like a landmine you have to be very careful with it like it, it for me like i try to use it just for like promotion of either you know the podcast or my website or with my streaming or reviews because I, I work with game companies and it's like right sometimes i go on it and i see some of the most toxic stuff and i'm like yep yeah, i'm logging off for this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the the toxicity i i hope that that's just a hurdle that will that will all collectively as a society get past and maybe it's just a growing pain of of it coming up because there is a lot of potential for a really cool conversation and i know when you, you're mentioning like the game companies too that's another sensitive thing where yeah. I was just in a session the other day because I, you know, I knew I was coming on um, for this, and I, I've had interactions where where a lot of folks, you know, there are a lot of fans who want to know um, about this character or that, and sometimes we're not always at liberty to say because while I've played the character, I don't own the character, and and then a lot of uh, companies would just rather that you that we don't go necessarily speaking as the character. Well, outside of kind of what they've sanctioned because they spend so much time creating these properties, you know, and you, you know, obviously from working with them and anyone who plays a video game, we all know that there's secrecy behind it. Um, we all know that when we play that game, we want to have that experience of like discovering it for the first time for ourselves and kind of keeping some of the integrity of those characters. Um, and I think that, you know, for the, from the developer standpoint, they've spent years years creating these characters in these worlds and and um uh oh, oh my gosh i'm i'm well, i'm gonna butcher something right now uh, no, no, but, don't worry about it. <laughs> uh um but uh but when when we come in to do the voices uh we are we are there for for like a moment in time um you know we're there at the end of the process uh, and while we bring a ton of life to these characters, um, we are we are only there for a portion of the journey, and so you don't want to necessarily <laughs> you don't want to you don't want to botch something that that has had so much careful consideration. Gosh, who was I going to pardon me for a moment? Oh no. Um, no Jennifer Hale was saying something uh, in in, a, in an interview that she had, and she's like, "I am the ink at the tip of the pen, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but there's a whole pen behind me, <laughs> and, <laughs> and and I'm 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 merely like the tiny thing that comes out and like gets gets written. That may even be a uh, you know not as accurate an analogy to all the hard work that goes in beforehand, but that is all to say that that when we go out to represent these characters." you know there is there is an entire army of people who have worked on that game and worked with that character and and we really need to be uh, which is why sometimes it's careful about how we represent them online and on social media um because that's that's not just uh that that is someone else's baby it's also mine to a yeah. to a certain extent because i get to be the voice of it and i get to uh be a part of the uh, life of that character but that is a hundred percent that team's baby as well. 
uh, and even more so. And so respecting that vision and not just being like, I'm this now, so I'm just going to do whatever the hell with it. Um, mm -hmm. And and that's the interesting line with, you know, with video games and these properties that are uh, created as a result of this collaboration, you know, working in the video game industry. So, yeah. Um, so some of those interactions, that's kind of why I get shy of it too, because I'm like, uh, I, I want to do the voice. I want to wish everyone well as Alex or as O or as, you know, any of the number of characters that I play. Um, I just also want to do it with total respect and deference to the folks that spent the time to bring that character to life in the first place. Um, and, and uh, you know, hopefully all the, all the fans and folks can respect that as well um yeah. I, I i'm i'm so lucky that i get to be the face it's weird as a voice actor but yeah, the <laughs> face of the character um, well you are the first official official like full-on face and voice of alex for from street fire like i know there's That's been true, yeah. other people before that voiced <clears throat> well, alex but you right. are you are Alex. <laughs> I I am honored and humbled by that. Um, yeah, because I mean, I I get to be like pre Alex, right? Because in in five, he hasn't had the massive journey that he had all through three. Yeah. So like, you know, obviously Alex has a ton of story, and and uh, and had a, had a, another uh, gentleman who was voice acting him previously too. Um, and I was so honored to uh, you know come in as as this character because he's got a lot of history uh and and a big connection with the fans out there too so this was it was a crazy thing to jump in yeah to be that i was like well, don't screw it up don't screw it up man like <laughs> just whatever you do <laughs> um uh but yeah that was a fun character to to jump into and i i gather that uh, a lot of folks who listen to your podcast are big street fighter 5 fans as well yeah indeed indeed fantastic i love that <laughs> i i for one hope that there will be uh, even more content to come that will uh you know that alex can be even more of a part of because five is not necessarily it's, it's not his story at all he gets to kind of make a little kind of cameo appearance before he has his massive journey um that that happens in three um but it was kind of cool to visit the beginning of that character yeah. um, and and find out, OK, where where did he start? What uh, what what drives what drives him and, and what is this little snapshot that we're seeing of his life before it takes off? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's one of the things, too, is like when I saw the trailer for Alex, I was like, holy crap, who's voicing him? Then I heard the voice come out. And I was like. You nailed him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. I, I really appreciate that. Thanks. Um, he's a he's a cool dude. Um, you know, and, and uh, I, I'm glad that the that the voice has has been has been uh, good enough to hopefully get people jazzed when they play him and when they're in the middle of a fight that you feel like you're really taking the piss out of somebody. You know, when you. <laughs> um, yeah. He was he was a neat one to to come by. Um, I was actually I was actually just in the lead up to chat with you because I've I've played before. I grew up playing uh, Street Fighter Two. Uh, was mm -hmm. like that was that was my jam. Uh, back you know walking to the Seven Eleven and and playing the the arcade of, of Street Fighter Two. We're, we're from the same era. There you go. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I remember those days going yeah. in, and that that was it. And I think a lot of this generation doesn't understand like how big street fighter 2 was back in the day oh, it was it was huge it, it was monumental God, I freaking <laughs> love that game i don't think i was any good at it back then even either but uh, but it was good i loved it <laughs> uh you know i'd mostly compete against my friends i didn't have worldwide competition so i didn't know how how bad i actually was because mm -hmm. <laughs> you're only playing about like 10 to 20 people max in yeah. your neighborhood um you know so you, you kind of knew where you stood there now you just get to play across the globe which is freaking fantastic um isn't, and then did isn't this something like back in the 90s you never would have thought we'd have the way the world is now oh my god uh, well yeah also 
all the times that my parents were like, why are you playing video games? What the hell are you wasting your time? And I'm like, these are educational, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd be like, but seriously, I was kind of like, I was like, they're artistic, they're educational, they're inspiring. And I would, I, I, I freaking love video games so much. Um, and, and my folks, God bless them. They have been so freaking supportive of me all, all throughout my career path. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that was one thing that was always a sticking point. Cause I'd be, I'd, I'd of course like sneak up in the middle of the night and I'd like grab the console and whatnot. And I'd, I'd be playing video games or like on the PC and, and occasionally like if I wasn't, if it wasn't totally quiet, my dad would come in and he'd be like, what the hell are you doing here? And I'm like, I'm like, I'm, <laughs> what I'm what, um, and you know, it was, it was seen as like this waste of time, but now yeah. you've got professional gamers. What the. I mean, seriously, professional gamers, that wasn't even a consideration back yeah. in the day. And now people can make a full on freaking living as as like a legitimate sport. Uh, yeah. It's amazing. And then and then from from the aspect that I'm interested, because I, I love the competition aspect, I I uh, I, I have I have kind of like uh, <laughs> it, it takes practice, though, and skill. And, and I think Counter-Strike was the last time I was actually competitive at something like, and I mean, Counter-Strike back in the day when I was in college, like around 2000, mm -hmm. uh, that's the last time that I really got super competitive about a game. But my interest lies now in, in the expansive stories that games tell. And that's freaking just amazing. And now I can like legitimately point to my parents and my mom is playing Red Dead Redemption right now. Really? I swear to God, she's she's in her 70s and she's playing Red Dead Redemption 2 and she freaking loves it. Whoa. And she like she jumps on. She's like, yep, uh, she can't. She forgot how to cook the other day. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm super excited because she she loves it. My dad's sitting there and she's he's like, you're going to have to teach me how to play that because he he loves Westerns. He loves, you know, all that mm. sort of stuff. And it, it's it it is living a western and and it's this amazing thing where all this stuff that was a waste of time before mm -hmm. is this beautiful immersive um engaging art if you want to call it or mm -hmm. or just this cool experience that people can have even if you're in your 70s playing a game you know <laughs> riding around accidentally shooting a butcher mm, i don't know you know <laughs> It's it's so fun and and I love that my my mom also got introduced because she plays it online too. She's like, these people are trying to kill me. There there there's this guy. He's like on me like a rabid dog. He's trying to kill me. I'm like ah, welcome to the internet, mom. That is <laughs> that, that that could be a local you know uh, Janice down the street, twelve years old, who has just decided to hog tie you and drag you across the entire <laughs> countryside. Um, but it's fun. She loves it. She's she's just having a great time with it, and and I think it's cool to see to see it ha have such a such a wonderful, cool place uh, um, where we can tell stories, and uh, and it feels like you're watching. It feels like you're living a movie, you know. Really does. So, really does. like my my mother, it, it, I'm I'm actually glad you brought up that you know your mother is playing a game because my mother is actually my mother's the same age and it's it's really interesting because when i was uh you know in my my high school high school going into college years i was really mm -hmm. big on the god of war okay the god of war series and the new like my mother when she would just sit there and watch me play like she wouldn't play it but she was like super into kratos story <laughs> and like every single like i played one and then i think i i went off to college and then she ended up picking up two, and she picked up three, and then she picked up Ascension, and then she bought like the, <laughs> the freaking like the what is it, the the PSP and PS Vita just to play. Oh my god, uh, Ghost of Sparta and the other one, and like I found out recently, like she picked up a PS4 to play the new God of War. Hell yeah! And I was like, really? I'm like what? She's like. I love this story. I she's like, I want to know what happened next. I'm like, <laughs> thinking to myself, man, this is freaking cool. My mom's like, and she just she uh, just made seventy. I'm like, man, the fact that you're into this, that the medium as a whole, like it doesn't matter how old you are, you know, what gender you are, whatever you identify with, like it's just something everybody can just hop on and enjoy. 
that, yeah. that's something. It's pretty <laughs> cool. I know. Yeah, I never never expected it would be like this. And uh, I mean, honestly, to, to also be a part of it, too, is just uh, it's amazing. I love it. <laughs> man i grew up on i also grew up on some old shit too i grew up on like coleco vision oh, um every, wow. yeah yeah that's right and my mom was uh my mom was super good at uh a game called mousetrap and which which people may or may not you remember okay and um <laughs> it was like it was like a oh ladybug ladybug was she killed it ladybug ladybug's like advanced pac-man with weird like doors that you can switch yep. around and shit like that and then and then cubert of course yeah anyone <laughs> i think they tried to remake it i don't know if it if it worked out too well they i don't know the, he's in the new wreck and ralph movie which i was shocked to see that i was like cubert really <laughs> <laughs> Oh, was he in, wait, was he in, what, Wrecker Ralph? Yeah, they brought, oh, they brought yeah. the character back. I, I was shocked. I was like, That's it, man. That's these good. Kids, the kids these days wouldn't know what that is, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> now they do. Now they do. <laughs> no, that was some good stuff. So, yeah, anyways, I, I obviously, I'm, I'm a big fan. I love, I love video games. So, so I'm glad to be a part of the, the whole, <laughs> the whole workforce too, I guess, when it comes to them right <laughs> yeah <clears throat> what are uh what are some of the the video games that you are playing now or that you enjoy um uh, yeah i uh so games i i totally enjoy one of my favorite games of all time was system shock 2 um, oh man uh, you know there's a three right i know yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm so because for me i love system shock bioshock was a good new take on it but it was not system yeah. shock 2 was oh my good it was so good i and i i, I agree <laughs> with you i love bioshock as well bioshock felt i felt somehow more actiony to me and i, I yeah. really i love the story it kind of took me back to that same place but there was something wonderfully horrifying and twisted about system shock and i loved the more distinct rpg element that they had there wasn't kind of access to everything you had to choose your specialties I, I remember personally just like shuddering because I was also like a little young and uh, and and uh, when I was starting to play it, I remember just like sitting out in the chemical closet where there are all the chemicals like on the walls that you had to kind of like just memorize because no internet to tell you what to do. And I was like, uh, or at least no one who would post comprehensive guides on message boards yet. Right. Um, <laughs> and I'm sitting there looking at all these chemicals being like, the hell are these? And then you hear like a little whispering and shuffling outside the door. And I was like, ah, oh, crap, I'm out of ammo. I need to get chemicals. I need to <laughs> like having to, having to read through a bloody stock room while I'm in mortal danger. Um, and then all the while Shodan is kind of chatting in your ear just an amazing amazing yeah. game um so that that's one of my one of my favorites for sure um i'm a big metroid fan uh Ooh. i loved super metroid one of my favorite games i've played that game a number of times i revisited every couple of years to play back through it and segueing into that i love like currently i love side scrolly pixel art all those sort of there there's like a resurgence of them from indie developers and yeah. there are some fantastic games out there. And uh, one uh, one huge one that I'm sure tons of people have played, uh, Hollow Knight. I'm just playing through that right now. And I freaking love it. It's so good. It's so <laughs> good. And it, I love the style of it. I love I love um, that sort of weird. There's there's like a little bit of a, a weird macabre Tim Burton-y feel to it. Yeah. Um, uh, there, it's, it's adorable at times. It's heart-wrenching at others. Like... And some of the unexpected uh, bits of comedy and story that they put into it, where if you want to go and dig for it, it's there. I just love that. And then the huge map, all that I was in. I was in a session for a video game, and and Patrick Seitz was a uh, uh, voice directing. I don't know if uh, some folks might know him from a bunch of different uh, video games. Uh, you better and, and know man, him. Yeah, you better. <laughs> so he was he was just, he was asking me what I was playing, and I was like, I think I was playing Dead Cells at the time, and Ooh, I love that game too. <laughs> yeah, another cool one. And he he was like he was like, have you played Hollow Knight? And I'm like, no. What is that? And he showed me just the map. All I needed to see was the freaking map, and I was like, yep, I'm in. I will play it. <laughs> <laughs> like, the map is that large. Clearly, I will explore that map. Um, 
and and it's it's just wonderful it's so many cool areas to explore it, it was touching on everything about metroid castlevania all those games that i liked back during the day metroidvania um salt and sanctuary was another one that i i really I have, enjoyed I played that one i keep hearing everyone keeps telling me i need to play salt and sanctuary is it Super that good? good i i dig it i personally love it um you, are you a fan of dark souls yes if anyone's a fan of dark Souls, so it's like dark souls and a side scroller um it will it will definitely Whoa. leave you uh <laughs> a little um it'll leave you frustrated at many times <laughs> um but it's another one of those cool moody stories and you play play through it and it it is it's it's difficult and frustrating but also super rewarding once you you know once you really get a handle on the system and how to play with it so yeah i love that one and then uh Oh gosh, there's so many of them out there. So uh, in a, in a complete about face, another one that I played for oh something like 300 hours or something that I pumped into it was a uh, Civilization. Only, only 300 hours. <laughs> yeah. So I, I got I got pretty deep into Civ Six. I I grew up playing Civilization Two, and then I I didn't return to the franchise until Six. And and something about I don't know whatever the art style the design. Um, it really, really gripped me, and I I couldn't get it out of my head, and I became mildly obsessive <laughs> about <laughs> about playing it, and so I've I've logged so many hours on on Civ Six. I'm sure some people will be like three hundred, whatever. I've spent an entire year straight just you know, <laughs> the bucket below me, um, that I change every week. Uh, so so that's another. <laughs> another one that i've played and then augment that with uh with I, I i listen to bringing it full circle to podcasts i listen to a lot of history podcasts and uh i was listening to hardcore history dan carlin's hardcore history which if anyone out there hasn't listened to it it's freaking amazing um add you should all list, people add it to the list <laughs> <laughs> add, it, add it to the list it's amazing if for anyone who's even mildly interested in the history of the world dan uh, especially focuses on like the extremes of the human experience so a lot of a lot of conflict a lot of wars world wars mm -hmm. um you know the persian empire and its conquests yada 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 um but you listen to that and you're playing civilization at the same time it's just like an overload um <laughs> and and a very good idea if you have i don't know a couple of years of your life to uh spend <laughs> that and then i'm listening to another um mike duncan's the history of rome so th there's so many good podcasts and, and good historians or enthusiasts out there who compile uh a lot of cool um story uh you know uh stories or lessons i don't know it, it's it could be tantamount to taking an actual history class if you want to call it that um but it's really neat to to learn about so and then couple that with kind of playing through a game that that uh, touches on that bug for um conquest over the centuries and years mm -hmm. so yeah those are my those are my vices at the moment oh and i i played through uh fallout 4 finally recently when i got cast in fallout 76 uh so i was like well I, I love Fallout and I actually played through one and two and three um, when I, you know, from when I was a kid to when I'm alive now. Uh, <laughs> I decided that, that four would be fantastic research and, uh, and I, I really dig it too. And I was obviously playing that for performance and there are a lot of great ones in that. Um, uh, and that, that was a nice, nice thing to get me in the mood for, for going on to sessions uh, in Fallout 76. So, yeah. And yeah. What are your thoughts on the Fallout seventy six? I think with the patches, it's gotten a lot better. Yeah, I, I I enjoy it. I, I'm not gonna be one of those YouTubers or, or content creators <laughs> who bashes it because and, right. and I, I'll give you give you an insight on that. Um, and, and for the audience too, I might catch flack for saying this. I oh don't, God. I I do not care. Uh, I have learned uh, as a YouTuber <laughs> that I've. Okay, there are so many optics and politics in gaming YouTube. It is ridiculous. It's, yeah. But um, there's a thing where you have to be as controversial as possible to bash something 
in order for you know to to get clicks and whatnot. Uh -huh. People can completely enjoy a game, but they'll get on camera and just bash it, just <laughs> so they can get people to. Sometimes, come sometimes it's fun to to vent, I suppose. Or I mean, you know, when you're yeah. getting really like passionately aggressive about a thing. I don't know. I've watched the uh, tear apart this movie videos before, but you're right. There should probably be some some positive in the conversation too i'm right. assuming that's where you're going <laughs> yeah yeah because it's like I, I've, I've seen i've seen uh youtubers like and i i know a lot of the youtubers bigger and smaller and whatnot where they'll just destroy a game and then at the end of their video they will be like oh yeah here's a good part here and <laughs> i'm like but i love it and i've pumped a ton of time into it right and it's like, I, I you know, because a lot of us are in, in message groups and yeah, I, yeah. I'll ask him like, damn, is the game that bad? Like, oh, no, I love it. Well, hell, I couldn't tell from your review. Clickbait, brah, clickbait. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I say all that to say um, Fallout 76, it, it had its issues, but I really enjoyed it. But yeah. I really recommend it. And I try to tell people when I review a game that, no, this is just my opinion on it, but I highly recommend you go out and try the game yourself because, you know, and Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, but when we were younger, we, I mean, we had game magazines, but for us, we had to actually rent games from, you know, Blockbuster, the kids probably don't know about that, but, you know, renting games or, 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 or borrowing from friends, right that's on. how we got to experience them. Blockbuster, yeah, Blockbuster was a great place to go. <laughs> Back in the day, uh, they had uh, they had all sorts. They had movies on box tapes, and you had to put them into your, your VCR, and uh, you had to you had to rewind it before you returned it. And uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's seriously, yeah, freaking blockbuster. <laughs> the hell relic is that? It's, uh, um, yeah, no, you you. I mean, that was that was one thing, and I actually kind of appreciate that about uh, a lot of games today, um, including some of the Souls franchise does this. They they purposefully do not say how to do anything in the bloody game. They don't they don't tell you what anything does yep. anymore. That there was there was like a stint of games where they they almost held your hand through everything, and oh. now there are a lot of games that that uh, that purposefully work against that to bring it back to the days when it's like no, you, there is no resource for you to go to, and so when you're playing a game right from jump, you kind of get that cool experience again yeah. before the internet gets full of the the uh, all the all the walkthroughs and and the indexes for everything you get to experience it like i don't know what this does the game's not going to tell me so i just have to i don't know put this thing in that you know in that bucket or i have to <laughs> I decide whether i'm going to kill this person or not um without any con without any notion of what's going to happen and uh or, or dark souls i love that they just they're just a bunch of objects around that no one knows what they right? do and some people still don't know what some of this stuff does um and all these easter eggs that are out there and, and don't get me wrong everyone who puts together a walkthrough thank you thank you thank you because there's so many times when i've been just like stuck <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like screw it i don't have 50 hours i need a walkthrough so right? i also appreciate that but there's <laughs> something super cool about about yeah not having any context not having any foreknowledge of what's going to happen um but you know i i don't know it's it's the devil we live with now right you've got you've got uh, reviewers coming out right out the gate saying a bunch of stuff but but totally like it's all it's all just words and opinions man and and ultimately it's up to the gamer if they if they want to go in and try it out because even though it's not for all these reviewers who cares it might totally be for you yeah. And and make that decision on your own. Yeah. I'm also susceptible. I, I certainly you know like jump on. I I read them too, but I got to remind myself sometimes. That I'm like, yeah, but what do I think? Uh, I can also be my own my own frame of reference. Um, I mean, the reviews are helpful because there's so much to spend your time on out there uh, mm -hmm. that that you got to You know, people want to be selective mm -hmm. nowadays. Uh, and as far as like, because you were mentioning Fallout, where you you, you really in, enjoy or at least enjoyed some of the experience with it. Yeah, like, and I think for me, like, being a Fallout fan, I, I've played one, two, three, the offshoots. There were so many offshoots before. Yeah. Uh, as the picked up the, the franchise. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, I enjoy 76, 
both from like a narrative perspective and from the fact that it just drops you into the wasteland and it it doesn't guide you. And I feel like for a lot of people uh, who are playing four or who are playing three or New Vegas, they're used to having their hand, you know, like not really, because Fallout doesn't really hold your hand, but it does tell you, okay, you need to go here, you need to go there, you need to right. do this. But with the new one, it's like, no, you're in the wasteland. The story is what you make of you. You need to do something <laughs> within the wasteland. And yeah. I like that realistic survival type of experience. And I think for a lot of people who are used to it, which could be a lot of the newer generation that came up with, I, and I think this really hit heavy in the 360 PS3 era where games had put you through a tutorial. We're going to teach you every little thing that this yeah. game does. And 76 doesn't do that. And I think for some people, it's jarring for people like, you know, like us, we kind of enjoy not being told what it does. Yeah. Because that's how gaming was <laughs> up until like the, the PlayStation 3, 360 era. We literally, you had the met, you had the, uh, the, the booklet, which the games don't come with that. Right. <laughs> Books. The hell? The right. hell are those? <laughs> Paper. Oh. That's for wiping my ass. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can cut that out too. Um, <laughs> ah, <laughs> yeah, no, I and I love that. That's that's kind of that. That's going to be our new. That's going to be marking this new generation too of games where it's 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 back to that sandbox where anything is possible and it's kind of the player's game. Um, I, I I must admit that I haven't actually played 76 yet, so I don't I don't know. I, I've been a little hesitant because I I love the single player games so much. I love single mm -hmm. player narratives. Um, I haven't really immersed myself in many multiplayer games since like World of Warcraft, the beginning, like the first year or two of that game. I played it when it came right out. I loved it, um, but since then I haven't really jumped into MMOs all that much. Uh, except for Warframe, I like Warframe quite a bit, um, <laughs> but I haven't oh, really man, jumped Warframe into it. So good. Really good, right? And and for a for a free game, Digital Extremes freaking knocks it out of the park. Um, I I love that company. The the content they've been coming out with, it's I think it's really solid for uh, for what they're offering. But um, but anyways, back to uh, on seventy six. Um, I, I'm I was obviously super jazzed to be part of it because I love the Fallout world i love the style um and I, I haven't necessarily jumped into the game been a little hesitant just simply because i do like the single player experience uh so much so uh i don't know i'm i'm a little and and i've heard the reviews too but i should just like pick it up and and get into it and see because i do like that world i like living in that space and if that's what it's about then you know it's probably probably pretty pretty solid and then i mean it's interesting that uh because they don't have any npcs obviously when i was doing the voicing for it i was doing a lot of voicing for found footage so mm -hmm. uh if you find my voice in the game you you'll probably find me on any number of hollow tapes i probably play like about a dozen different characters throughout uh the game and of course you kill me all the time because i'm i'm one of the scorched i'm the scorched male enemy <laughs> um so you're you're constantly putting a bullet in me in that game um <laughs> and that was that was another fun fun session because any enemy sessions are just uh a cool workout because it's a it it is it's just battle and with the scorched it was like no drier more stress on the throat and that that's not what they said <laughs> but, but that's kind of the idea and and obviously they wanted to create this other enemy uh, that had uh, had its own sound, and it was a uh, it was a fun journey to play those those creatures too, <laughs> things that had a little bit of their humanity left in them, a little bit of weird confusion from all of the from all of uh, what was afflicting their bodies and tormenting them, mm -hmm. uh, and and still being driven to seek out and and kill whatever life form <laughs> came near it. So. <laughs> Yeah. See, Anyways, fun game. Was, you were expecting this type of podcast, were you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh man. So uh Michael Coleman, uh Michael T. Coleman, voice of Cody Travers from Street Fighter Five. Mm-hmm. Um, he's messaging me. He's saying that one of his goals, uh, since he has the tales of extraordinary, he would love to have all the Street Fighter characters come on uh and be characters in their show because he's already he's got Matt Mercer, uh Kyle Bear, uh Bonnie uh I can't believe I missed her. Uh, I forget, I'm forgetting her last name. Uh, Bonnie Gordon. And, Bonnie Gordon, uh, right, right. And a bunch of others. So he's like, man, it'd be awesome to have Mark on too. I'm like, hey, I'll wow. ask. <laughs> yeah, what's what's uh, <laughs> what's going on? Tell him to reach out. Yeah, yeah. That would that would be that would be really cool. Okay, cool. So, all right, I just let him know. He says he'll be in contact. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, definitely. Have him hit me up. That'd be super uh, cool. I uh, like the. Yeah, I like the Street Fighter world. I like the fans, obviously. So, like, uh, hopefully we'll be able to create something cool for them in that aspect, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, I know we kind of diverted into, like, a whole video game conversation. But, yeah, you got any other any other burning questions? Um, um, how, how did you get into the industry, actually? I got into the industry. Uh, I was doing a lot of musical theater uh, throughout my life. I've been a stage actor uh, my whole life. Um, and I kind of always knew that I wanted to be an actor. Uh, and I ended up uh, moving to New York after being a musical theater grad. And I thought I was going to get on to like, you know, a lot of Broadway shows and be kind of in that world. Um, and I, I worked a bit off Broadway and I worked in some regional theater. And then I actually ended up getting hooked up with Disney um and opening a show for them and through that i started to learn puppeteering so Mm -hmm. now i'm a puppeteer and a musical theater performer and i totally i was like back and forth doing all these shows an actor's life is generally hectic um Mm -hmm. i got to do some cool travel um and i found myself uh doing doing a show down at disney and i was kind of thinking to myself at that time i wasn't sure i I knew that something wasn't kicking about musical theater for me and and New York in particular. I was like, that's Mm -hmm. not really the place I want to totally live. Um, It's, it's a cool city. I had been there for a couple of years, but I was like, I don't know if that's home for me. And I didn't really know what to do. And I actually started looking into like game design and I was like, I'm going to go to college for game design. And then I started uh, at right about that time when I was about to pull the trigger on going into like a, a whole other grad program for game design. Mm -hmm. I got involved with a bunch of indie film and commercials out in Florida. And I was like, I'm going to do film instead because I obviously acting is like one of my first (laughs) loves performing. And so then I got that bug and I was like, I'm going to move to LA and become a Hollywood movie star actor. And so I moved out here, um, started pursuing that. Uh, and I was, you know, I created my web series at that point. I was, I was doing a lot of, uh, work out here in LA doing indie film as well. Commercials. I did musicals out here too, because that's kind of what I, I knew. Um, one of my first shows I did Avenue Q cause I also know a lot of puppeteering. Mm-hmm. So, and that actually a uh, fun, fun fact they they took our, uh, production from Avenue Q out here in LA and they put us into the, the TV series, big little lies. Um, with Reese Witherspoon and Nicole Kidman. So if you've watched that series, it's fantastic. The acting is phenomenal. Um, but we are actually, I'm, I'm Nikki and Trekkie Monster in the production of Avenue Q in that in that show. Oh, so wow. I get to make a couple like little cameo appearances on stage as we're rehearsing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're not a part <laughs> of the main storyline, but I am in it as as uh one of the performers uh which was really cool a cool opportunity that i never thought for a million years would happen from just doing a musical in la um during all that time as i said i have this equipment and i was like you know what i've always loved animation and video games i'm gonna start i'm gonna start getting in, involved in vo um and i started listening to uh podcast uh, uh podcast slash youtube show vo buzz weekly Mm-hmm. Um, I started, uh, listening to, uh, there's, there are a lot of great, everyone in the VO industry, if, if anyone else who you've had on hasn't already told you is super friendly. Uh, and there, I was amazed because in the film industry, it, it can seem hard sometimes to make a solid connection. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the VO industry, when I would express my interest, 
all these actors were like, yeah, sure. I'll meet with you. Come out and we'll have coffee. I'll, ch I'll chat with you about anything. <laughs> and I was like, what? Y you mean, really actually chat with me? And everyone's very accommodating. And, um, there, there's like, there seems to be, uh, not a, I mean, there's never a total lack of ego, but there's way less ego in the VO world and everyone, they know that, you know, in order to survive in the VO world, you got to have a lot of skill and a lot of drive and not that you don't in the film world, but our faces aren't always attached to it. And, mm. and, you know, it is, it's, it's more of a family maybe for being a smaller industry and, and people are just uh, generally more connected with each other in it. And so more willing to help out anyone who's interested. So there were so many avenues that opened up to me uh, to connect with folks out here. And I ended up getting a contract through SAG-AFTRA to do a bunch of audiobooks. Mm -hmm. uh, I ended up working a bunch of independent jobs, doing like commercials, e-learning, on-hold messaging. Um, and then from there, I got an agent and I was like, oh my God, I have all these auditions coming in for like projects. <laughs> and, and I was like, I'm going to just do this now because I had so much opportunity in VO coming like right at me that I was like, as an actor, all I wanted to do was act. And mm -hmm. when I was trying to be a film actor, I felt like I was running around trying to trying to meet people and, and or trying to, uh, I don't know, look a little better or have clothes or t uh, maybe I wasn't doing it right. <laughs> that could also be <laughs> everyone has their own path. But for me, whatever reason, I, I couldn't I couldn't just get involved in in doing enough uh, of the actual performance to sustain me. Mm -hmm. But then I had just this influx of auditions, um, this whole community, and I could do VO almost all the time when I wanted to. And so I, I started performing and I started to really kind of come to life and I lucked out uh, and, and I actually booked the lead role on Home Adventures with Tip and O on Netflix through Ooh. dreamworks and i don't know if you if you know the movie home came out a while ago it's with jim parsons and rihanna mm. and i play i play jim's part um so i was actually jim parsons voice double on the tv series and through that i got to work with so many amazing people i got to work with phil lamar i got to work with d bradley baker i got to work with nolan north who i'm sure everybody knows out there in video gaming world he is <laughs> like the don of video games um and his fantastic performances in Uncharted, um, <clears throat> um, amongst many, many others. Uh, and I got to work with so many cool people in the VO industry. And I was on that show for like two, three years um, doing that. And then from that, it just started to grow and grow. And I ended up getting Street Fighter. And I ended up uh, in, you know, a bunch of other video games and anime. Um, and you know, the world really started opening up after that. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of it is with anything else in the industry. It's a lot of persistence, um, a little bit of luck and, and uh, just keeping at it. <laughs> well, that's persistence, <laughs> Mark. That's what persistence actually is. Um, <laughs> well, I'm glad I told you something new today. Uh, <laughs> so that's how I got, that's how I got involved in doing this. And, and yeah, that's been great. <laughs> awesome, awesome. I'm actually, uh, my wife and I, we're actually going to be moving uh, to LA end of this year. I what? Believe. Sweet. Yeah. So uh, we're going to, good Lord, that's loud. I'll edit that out. Is okay? Can I, <laughs> can I rent your place in Hawaii? Sure. <laughs> I'll move to Hawaii. <laughs> it's, it's actually one of the days, too, because we have the condo here that's right outside of Waikiki, but we own a condo that's actually in Waikiki. Um, and oh, it's, sweet. it's just one of the things that we've we've done that a lot of people are shocked. They're like, oh, you guys are in your 30s and you, you, you own property. And I'm like, yeah, there was a time in history where people own property. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's one of the things, too, is uh, we, we realize that, you know, it's best, even if we're not always going to live in Hawaii, it's best to own something out here because, say, we ever do want to move back here, it's going to be astronomical. So, oh gosh! Heck you yeah, know, yeah. And, and it's because uh, my wife's actually from. She's from. She's from Hawaii. She's from another island, uh, Molokai. I'm from oh, cool. uh, Samoa, 
So it's, it's just interesting, like in how looking at the price of housing in both both places is just skyrocketing. And yeah. Ugh. Like, I'm geez. sure no one will come out to rent your place. Nobody's going to Hawaii anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Like I said, I seriously will. I need to get out there again. I love uh, Hawaii's just absolutely beautiful. Um, well, hey, I mean, I, I'll extend the same offer to you. I extend it to my <laughs> friend Coleman and anyone else. Like, uh, if you ever come out here, you need a place to stay. We have a, a penthouse condo in Waikiki. So, hey. <laughs> Did you hear that, everybody? <laughs> We're all welcome. Every one of us is welcome. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> You're going to have so many freaking phone calls after this. I actually had like, uh, I've had a lot of people like, hey, I'm coming out to Hawaii. Can I stay there? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, awesome. But but uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah. we're we're gonna be moving to uh, L.A. and I think the the area that uh, that Coleman lives in because uh, that's that's kind of like the area my wife wants to live in, and she's going to because uh, my wife's gonna pursue professional game streaming, which she's gotten gotten into it as being a streamer for Twitch and nice. It's been blowing up for her and for me. I got an offer to work as a. a user interface uh, engineer for Google. I don't know if I'm actually going to pursue that because podcasting has been fun for me and a lot of game companies have been giving me offers to do different things with them. So Yeah, shoot. Well, wherever the road takes <laughs> you, man. That's awesome. I mean, we'd be happy to have you out here in LA and I'm sure Hawaii will will miss you quite a bit. How is it in LA? Because I the only the most I've ever <laughs> been is just like through LAX or the occasional time I go there for like training for work. It's I've busy. Never... Okay, <laughs> it's it's busy out here. Uh, <laughs> no, LA LA is great. I mean, uh, obviously, this is, will come as no surprise to anyone, but the traffic is fantastic. You can just get anywhere at any time of day. Like no cars. The the freeways are a hundred percent ungrooved. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, I avoid it like the plague, the traffic. <laughs> um, I mean, honestly, like the, the city is beautiful. It's full of like wonderful culture out here. It's so many things to do. Uh, I mean, yeah, my only complaint is the freaking cars, <laughs> and, but if you, if you avoid that, or if you're, uh, if you're brave enough to do the motorcycle thing, you can probably get around pretty easy. Um, or if you just kind of drive whenever you need to drive or you live in certain neighborhoods. I live in Pasadena um, and I love it up here. It's a little outside of the city and mm -hmm. it's close enough to the Valley, which is where most of the voiceover uh, stuff in this uh, city happens. It happens in uh, Burbank uh, and North Hollywood wow. and there are studios all over the place to be true. I mean, the, the city is large and people are working everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of VO takes place in Burbank uh, and in the Valley. And so, those are easily accessible to me, but yeah, I love it. I, I love, I love getting outdoors. The mountains are super close to me up here in Pasadena. So I like going hiking and, uh, and doing that. Um, uh, I need to get back on it because I'm, I'm a scuba, I'm a scuba diver as well, which is why I've, I've been out to Hawaii a couple of times to Maui and Kauai and, uh, been scuba diving out there, which is why I said I need to come and rent your place. Cause I need to jump back in the water uh hey, sometime serious. soon if you, if you come out here just just let me know and i'm, I'm dead serious <laughs> heck yeah heck yeah <laughs> we'll do location swapping for a little while <laughs> but no i mean la's la's fantastic um i feel much more at home here than i did in new york uh there's there's still the pace um and still the uh the the level of of quality of entertainment and of people the drive for in general of people wanting to accomplish great things is still mm -hmm. there as it is in any wonderful you know big city um a lot of people are very driven to to do some really cool work um so that hasn't uh, gone away but it's mm -hmm. a little more spread out and there there are a few more plants that <laughs> you can see <laughs> still a lot of sun uh i very much enjoy all four seasons so but i've just kind of accepted the fact that i i won't get all four seasons until later on in life maybe <laughs> <laughs> but you know there there are mountains nearby where the where snow is falling i'm told so uh you can drive up there at any point in time <laughs>
Is it true that it doesn't rain often in California? Um, yeah, that is that is true. Uh, however, last week you wouldn't know it. We had a freaking deluge out here, and um, it was wow. beautiful. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't rain a ton, and obviously, I mean, this is maybe getting into uh, different issues, but yeah, there's obviously a water problem uh, out in California, as you might expect. Oh. Um, but luckily, we did get a bunch of rain. Uh, you know, we've experienced drought from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Yeah, so if you like the rain, um, you're going to miss it <laughs> out here. Because uh, I don't know if you've experienced this in the time you've been out here. Like mm -hmm. when it rains out here in Hawaii, the sky, the sky is clear, but you, you, it's just raining. It can be pouring. You can look up. The sky is blue. The sun's out, and you're like. <laughs> right. And you're like, what? what is happening? Right. Is it just materializing in the air? Right. <laughs> right. That's why you guys get so many rainbows out there, right? I mean, it's right. just all over the the weather conditions. Yeah, I I mean, I did experience the the weather comes and goes maybe a little 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 quicker mm -hmm. than it does in in a lot of places. It's uh, uh, I mean, maybe that could just be island life. Um, you know, being being out there where maybe when you have the the giant land masses, things get a bit more predictable. But being out in the middle of the ocean, I don't know, you might uh, be susceptible to spur of the moment uh accumulations of clouds and moisture so <laughs> but it's 70 all the time out there right there's nothing to worry about it's always 70 ah no it, it's uh oh. lately it, it's usually 70 70 75 on occasion it'll jump up to 87 with the humidity index can make it feel like it's 102 103 rarely very rarely but it can happen <laughs> <laughs> right 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 still i don't know pretty beautiful pretty beautiful <laughs> if you ask me <laughs> that's right. cool man um i guess like my my last question is yeah. uh because because we kind of flow through everything actually I, I i like how this conversation just it went every it, we touched on every topic i, I wanted to ask yeah for um, sure I guess, like, what are some, the last question is, like, what are some of your projects that you have in the works that you can't, and I think you kind of answered that already, there's things you can't talk about, so I'll skip that question entirely and go with, uh, <laughs> what are some, <laughs> what are some, uh, what, what, what advice or guidance would you give to viewers and listeners that are interested in getting into that industry, the voice acting industry? Oh, uh, hop over to D. Bradley Baker's website, I want to be a voice actor .com, um, and read through it. Uh, D is a, a wonderful voice actor, and he always got asked the same question. And so he made a very comprehensive website uh, that, that is kind of like a primer. Um, mm -hmm. So beyond that, I would say, you know, if it, it, it's it, with anything in the acting industry, you kind of got to want to do it and potentially expect that uh, there are going to be ups and downs and mm. be willing to weather those things. But um, it is it is a business. So having a good business mind about how to hustle up your own work and make connections and network is a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is an acting business. So acting classes, uh, you know, a lot of people are like, I, I have a cool deep voice. I have a funny voice. Um, and that's great. That's one component of it. And, and having a certainly a unique quality about your voice is one thing. Um, but these are all stories. And w as we were talking about earlier, you know, video games are getting, uh, to be a bit more, they're paying a lot of attention to story and the animations are all story. And, you know, a lot of these things are, are very much, uh, it's all acting. So take a couple acting classes, take some improv classes, um, you know, if you're looking to, to, uh, to get on board with it in that capacity, um, because to, to just do the voice, but not the acting portion of it doesn't really, uh, fulfill what you, what you need to do. And you can do it from your home. Um, you can work remotely. Um, if you're really serious about getting involved in the business, it would probably be good to get to one of these big cities like LA, New York, um, Vancouver, probably. I'm, I'm actually not sure how how big the industry. I'm. I, I love Canada. <laughs> I love Vancouver. <laughs> I don't know a hundred percent about the industry, but I know Vancouver is kind of like the LA of of Canada, and Toronto is kind of like the New York of Canada. So those are other large hubs for that sort of work. But obviously, being there in the city 
it helps you to do all that business side, which is network, um, find the community out there. Um, the community's there. You just have to connect with it. And then obviously uh, tracking down some things like VO Buzz, VO Buzz Weekly, or Crispin Freeman, another big voice actor. He's got a podcast, Voice Acting Mastery. Um, there's some really cool things to listen to to kind of get you on board uh, with it. And and it's it's super fun. You know, <laughs> It's fun to, to get auditions and, and really dive into characters, um, mm -hmm. you know. Same thing with uh, with Alex. I, I think I saw that that people were interested, like how I came came by the voice of Alex, and yeah, and so diving. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> diving into a thing like that. Another thing with with some of these video games um, and animations. Video games, obviously, very secretive. So we don't get any of the lines or the script until you get to the job. So I didn't I didn't know what the script was about until I got there. So what I had to go on was you know obviously the research I, I had to go through and research alex's life and storyline from three and and kind of knowing that this was pre actually you know i don't even know if they told me it was pre three when i got there i don't even, th even think i knew that mm -hmm. um so you kind of got to be ready for anything and that's why i say take an acting class because you, you're wondering how do you prepare for one of these characters you prepare all your life and when you get the job, there isn't time to prepare. <laughs> when I started doing when I started doing home adventures with Tip and O, I arrived and they're like, all right, here we go. There's your scripts. Take one. And I'm like, oh shit, there's no primer. You're not gonna like tell me like what to do. <laughs> and, and they aren't. No one's gonna tell you what to do. You don't sit down and you don't have like a table read. You don't sit down and have uh have like a, a little powwow before you go right into it. And that's what happens. Uh, with a lot of these shows and so with Alex same thing we went right into it We took a bit of time talking about the character beforehand and setting the voice But I knew he was from New York. So what I do I jumped onto YouTube I, I was I obviously lived in New York. So a lot of that life experience I was lucky enough to have direct connection with folks that inhabit the city from the Bronx to Brooklyn and everywhere in between so I knew a bit about the attitudes and the voices, but I went on to YouTube and I scoured those videos looking for personalities, looking for street interviews, looking for people who are telling stories. Mm -hmm. One dude that I landed on who, who is not like, that's not at all my basis for Alex, but there's a guy named Steve Osborne. He's a former cop and he tells a ton of stories, but listening to his cadence and kind of listening to the street stories that he was telling paints this wonderful picture and then practicing that so it doesn't sound like uh, so it doesn't sound like something clunky when it comes out, hopefully, so that it sounds like you're just talking in that accent when you do it. Mm -hmm. um, but hearing those accents and immersing yourself in that helps you so that when you arrive and they're like, hey, this is Alex. Guess what? He's young. Guess what? We want him to be a little darker, a little bit in a moodier place. This is potentially, you know, like he lost his folks and he's with Tom and Patricia now, but but like this is before he sets off on this massive journey so he's probably got he's got tons of walls up in front of him you know he's just he's living in like in he's he's not rich he's living on the streets of new york and uh, you know he's a fighter he's been he's being taught all these things by tom but he's he's also he's kind of got that you know in, in new york some people they they kind of got that they kind of got a lot of walls up in front of them because they got to survive you yeah. got to survive on the streets and some people are brash about it. Some people may be a little bit more laid back. They wanted Alex to have a bit more of a, of kind of a laid back, muted, darker attitude to him. So I took what I knew of, of New Yorkers and we, we found the voice then and you find the voice before you go into it and you, and you settle on what the creators want and then you dive right into it there. But all the prep work, it's all the acting classes. It's all the things I could read on the history and all the all the videos I could watch to get my uh, you know any number of accents in line, and then I show up, and the creators have their idea, and I have the script right in front of me, and I got to make decisions right then and there, and you got to nail it, and and that's what they hire you to do. They hire you to be working on it all the time, and that's why I say, take some classes, practice a lot because that's all the prep, and then once you get the job, that's when all that prep comes out. So, yeah. If anyone's interested, get to work. <laughs> I mean, and you've, you know, not only Alex, but you've been in uh, Octopath Traveler, God Wars, mm -hmm. Hunter, Hunter, Black Rose Val 
uh, is it Dark Rose Valerie? Valkyrie uh, or Black God, Rose? I, I can never. I believe it's Dark Rose. When... I think it's Dark Rose Valkyrie. Yeah. Shoot. I couldn't remember because they were banding about the, the title too. Also, a lot of times when we when we find out, we, we get, uh, they say Black Rose Valkyrie on IMDb. When we find out what job we're at, it's like a code name. I don't, I don't hear that it's Black Rose Valkyrie. I'm, I'm there for like, you know, uh, I don't know, the Rhone River uh, instead, you know, something weird. Um, FYI, my laptop's super low on battery. So if you lose me for some reason, it's because of the technology. <laughs> hey, hey, we're at the end of the podcast. Hey! The at all. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, Mark, go ahead and tell people where they can find you and plug everything again. And yeah. I'll leave links to everything down below. <laughs> well, you can find me. I have a website, which I didn't plug before, markwitten.com, if you want to look at my reels and contact uh, info for my agency. Um, and <laughs> you can approach me with tons of jobs. Uh, that's markwitten.com. And uh, on Twitter, I'm at mpwitten, W-H-I-T-T-E-N, and on Instagram, at mwitten. Um, Facebook, if you want to, hit me up there, Mark Witten, same name. Uh, and, of course, Theater of Tomorrow. Check us out. We're on iTunes. We're on Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N, for all you podcatchers out there. And uh, theateroftomorrow.com, Theatra with an R-E. So Theater of Tomorrow, check us out and, uh, and listen through to some cool stories. Awesome. And people, you'll be able to catch this podcast here. It'll be up on YouTube, Google Play Music, Google Podcasts, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify, coming soon to iHeartRadio. Whenever nice. they decide that they're going to, you know, clear it. <laughs> uh, later on this week, uh, we'll be up on Sirius XM Radio. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, yeah, definitely catch this podcast where you can. But I'm, I, this is Prime Directive, people. Go and listen to Theater of Tomorrow. I, that's going to be my <laughs> new podcast going forward right now. I'm, I'm going to be diving. Head deep Thanks, into that. man. <laughs> appreciate but, uh, it. We very much appreciate it. But, uh, Mark, it's been an honor having you on. I, I know this probably went longer than we expected, but this, this, ah. was, this was an organic conversation. I really enjoyed uh, having you on the show. It's a lot of fun. Thanks so much for, for reaching out and, uh, and connecting. Yeah, yeah, anytime, anytime. All right, and uh, with that being said, people, we will see you on the next one. Did you enjoy this episode of the Casanova Podcast? Well, I hope you did. And if you did, please make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. And let us know what we can improve upon, what you liked, what you didn't like, and all that good stuff. And just make sure you always have a good time. That being said, this is your boy, Mikael Casanova, my wife's favorite YouTuber. I am signing out, and I'll catch you on the next episode.